what to do when you are faced with memories and even worse, you are confronted with those memories because of the holidays and you are aware that it's going to be lonely. That's what Joe and I talked about. We decided to meet up here in London and actually we did an entire live for over an hour and then we figured out that there was no sound. So I thought, well, let's use the DJ mic. Uh, it was amazing when we used it on the iPhone. I actually saw it doing a bunch of things and then we were totally gutted because it didn't work. But we did talk about memories and the importance of creating new memories when things have changed so much. Um, and this is the thing. When I said I wanted to go to London, at first she was like, yeah, but why would you go to London? I mean, she lives in London, so... And then at some point her daughter actually said, well, maybe she needs it, mom. Maybe she doesn't want to be alone. And actually that applied to all three of us because her daughter misses her dad, Joe misses her husband, and well, she also misses her mom. Her mom isn't around anymore. And the same applies to me. I don't have a mom and a dad anymore. And I just didn't want to be alone during Christmas. And here we are in London together and I've got a ton of footage, just no sound to share. And well, we, we promised to get up in time tomorrow and she's really tired. Um, I usually get, oh, there she is. I usually get really stoked uh, when I'm going live. So I was like, I need to go live. I need to talk about what we discussed during that other life, which was so amazing. And, and the one thing was we've spent four weeks. Hello. We spent four weeks in Chicago together. And here we are. And it's just like all times. We have so much fun when we are together, especially when the both of us are on camera together. So, um, Joe, now that you are watching, how does this sound? Is the sound any good? So. Yeah, well, it, it recorded. It just didn't record the sound. And yes, both of us are gutted that because we we really went deep down memory lane. But we promised that we'll do it again tomorrow. And of course, it's going to be a little bit different. But we talked about um, the heart at St. Paul's Cathedral. We talked about uh, the river bank at Thames. The Thames, the Thames River Bank, <laughs> and you know how they preserved the little hearts, the yellow hearts. And I didn't know this, but the yellow hearts are linked to those who died because of COVID. And apparently, there are 350,000 hearts already on that wall. I mean, that's a third of a million, right? And, you know, it's, it's important that we keep remembering the lost ones, that we keep remembering that there at some point was this thing called, this outbreak called COVID. And COVID, yeah, it took a lot of, a lot of lives, but it changed the world entirely in so many aspects. A couple of days ago, I actually discussed how it has influenced the young ones out there because of the social distancing and getting uh, homeschooled or online. You know, they had to follow school online. They didn't socialize out there, so they don't really know how to go about. But yeah, also loved ones, loved ones got lost in the process and I, I do also believe that we learned that everything can be changed, you know, in this really, in this short instant, which brings me back to something that I said before. 
Focus on what it is you want to achieve. Don't give up. And when you get distracted, make sure that you focus on what's important. And maybe because of all those experiences, you realize, hey, maybe I want to focus on something else. You know, when I experienced the whole thing with my ankle and I couldn't go anywhere, I really really had to reinvent my life, my work, what I was going to do. And, you know, it's now a year that I haven't used crutches anymore. For just a short while, I was inclined to do it again because my ankle gave me some problems again due to some exercises. But, well, here I am and I went here to London with the Eurostar, which was completely new to me. But uh, Jo, she knew how it worked, so she told me about it. She told me where to go, and that's what I did. And I have to say, it's kind of nice, actually, to lean back and just leave it up to Jo and her beautiful daughter, Ellen. And, you know, in the short time that, that we've been speaking to one another, we've done, uh, well, I want to say board games, but we've played cards. And it's been decades since I've played cards, but here we are and we did it. And tomorrow we are going to look for board games. And, you know, when it comes to memories and making making new memories, I think that's so immensely cool that we take things that at some point we did, we stopped doing it, and we are just literally having a good time. So we actually came up with a schedule for tomorrow, what we're going to do. So tomorrow is is going to be Christmas Eve. And, um, oh, just for the first sec. Um, so tomorrow is Christmas Eve. And we, well, and then and the daughter, she said, well, we, we called her anything, actually, because I said, what do you call her? Just call me anything, she said. <laughs> so, anything it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I liked you, you know, a little bit. Um, but we promised one another at 10, we are going to have breakfast. At 11, we are going to leave. We are going to do some sightseeing and shopping, especially the shopping, of course. Getting board games actual board games so it might be mon- monopoly i don't know and then we are going to have lunch either at um hamley's or uh what's the other one called also with an h uh, help me out here joe and harrods harrods then we continue the shopping if correct then we make sure that we get some dinner, which we can eat here at the hotel. And then we are going to go to Winter Wonderland. And well, when we were in Chicago, we went on the Ferris wheel. And I have to say, I got this amazing Christmas gift today. Joe had made this booklet. It's all the memories of us together in Chicago, but also with the actors, but also the places where we had been, also the Willis Tower. And um, those are such amazing memories. And I actually got to explain to Ellen what had happened. So I, I it was literally like I was reading a book and, and showing her these things like, yeah, was was amazing. And yeah, so so afterwards, after Winter Wonderland, uh, hopefully I can take some pictures. We get back here and then we are going to the Midnight Mass at St. Paul's Cathedral, which is next door. And we were joking about it because if you look at me here, then my window is over there. My window isn't that interesting, but Joe's room and Ellen's room is in the back. And they have a window over there. And over there is St. Paul's Cathedral. So they have this amazing view. And, well, you know, I heard about Midnight Midnight Mass. Because of Midnight, Midnight used to be a singer in uh, Crimson Glory. He isn't alive anymore, unfortunately. He passed away in 2009. But he left something behind which was Midnight Mass. He wanted something for his friend, so he recorded the t- tape. There's all these Christmas songs on there. 
And now I'm actually going to be at Midnight Mass. Okay, so what did Jill say? She said, lol, laughing out loud. It's mad you are here. Oh my God, don't go there. I can't believe you won. I didn't say anything about that, Joe. I just said we played card games. That's it. I didn't say anything else. Uh, but it was nice, you know. We were sitting near the fireplace. And actually, this is a lovely hotel. We can get water whenever we want. Um, purified water, whether it's chilled or it's normal temperature. <laughs> and and there's non-stop coffee. Of course, I had to go to Starbucks. So actually, see. Yeah, they, they, they actually have... See, there's a whole list on there. How I want it. I, had a note. I, I knew they put something on there. I just didn't know what it was. And, well, during the live that we did, we, we actually discussed the importance of, you know, because of everything that has happened, you know, Jo losing her husband through COVID, that's when she started to create the uh, fan page for Jason B. Gay. So basically her daughter said at some point, like, mom, you need something to do and you're good at this and she is good you know she can make these little edits these pictures and because she wrote these one-liners on there nowadays it's entire stories i picked up on something was not right and i reached out to her so at the same time well not at the same time prior to that i lost this client during covid um, she decided to say, I, I've had enough of this life and I can't blame her because of something which went on in her brain, certain chemicals, which made it very hard for her to trust on herself. And especially when you get mixed um, input, then yeah, it's, it's, so I have to assume she's happy. Um, and she said peace. She actually reached out to the people when she did it, say, said goodbye. Um, but as a result, I started watching Chicago Fire. And it, it showed me that I cannot be responsible for everything everyone does. No one can. We can only be responsible for ourselves. And of course, what we teach the younger generation, especially when you're a parent. And even that is not always possible, Let, let's face it. But because I watched Chicago Fire, I saw this one character, Sergeant Hank Floyd, uh, that's Jason Begay. And he, in, in Chicago Fire, he was the bad guy, you know, he was the one you were like. And then I started watching Chicago PD, the spin-off, and I was like, Okay, so is he really like this? Uh, because I saw basically a good person doing the wrong things for the right reasons. He did a lot of things he did. Uh, threatening, harassing people had to do with him wanting to protect his son from going to jail, being, uh, of course, the son of a cop and then getting into trouble. Um, well, not getting into trouble, but being bullied, harassed, maybe even dying, not surviving. So when I try to figure out what's this guy in real life, and well, then he actually explained like, yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to play bad character, but I'm a good person. And of course, there was more to it. Those who have seen it, they know I use hashtag inclusion. He talked about it on video, promoting inclusion. And that's basically my one word, because when it comes to giving a voice to people who do not know how to speak up, well, that's basically what I am about, and regardless of, of the reason. And that's how we met up. So, you know, through tra tragedy and trauma, beautiful things can happen. And now here we are. We are here in London. She's a few rooms down. <laughs> and like I said, she's very tired now. So um, she is 
watching along and I have to say I'm so curious if I could actually hear her on this live, you know, using this microphone. By the way, this is a new microphone, which I got especially to take with me and to be able to record easily. So this is a Rode microphone, USB mini microphone. And some out there will say, USB, really, how dare you? Well, I do have an XLR, but that's nice when you're at home and you don't have to take it with you. But this is easy because I can plug it into the phone straight away and, you know, happy me. It's cool. It's cool that we made all these memories in Chicago. It inspired me to do the cleanup challenge. We were in a hotel room together and we knew how to work together. And it's... a Pity that you can't hear the sound because Joe actually said it that that you know the two of us we we are a functioning well a couple sounds a little bit weird but a unit let's say we are a real good functioning unit together and so yeah it's nice to be here together in 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 London and all three of us can make new memories. We and, and we already started doing that, actually, because she told me about Secret Santa. And today I got my first Christmas present and, and I got to buy Christmas presents, too. And it's I mean, this is cool, actually experiencing what it's like in the UK to celebrate Christmas. I've never seen it. I've never experienced it. It's a whole new ball game. And. I can only say I'm so grateful for, yeah, Santa, yay, for having met Joe in real life. Because there's one thing when the both of us are live in on different locations, but when we are live together and we're sitting next to one another, we can have such a ball. We can have so much fun. Having said so, um, I'm glad that she's actually uh, watching this live, witnessing all of this. Uh, even though she's not on video. And like I said, we've recorded over an hour. And I was... And because, here's the thing. I use a DJI, DJI mic, the DJI, DJI mic microphone. And it has both a lightning... Um, lightning adapter and it also has one uh with usb-c so my ipad uses usb-c so i thought it was going to work and uh, yeah joe says oh we are great friends together best friends forever like sisters yeah that's basically what we concluded that we are like sisters and that's the one thing you know and who would have thought that through this tragedy, we would become friends and, you know, we really help one another out. And that's the good thing. And of course, she has also other friends who, uh, who she's really best friends with, as in helping one another out. And I've got other friends I can turn to. But it's amazing that, you know, here Christmas, and we understand one another. We understand this feeling. And uh, hang on for a sec. Yeah, they made this extra hot. So it's still hot, even though it's four hours later. Uh, but it's amazing to, to be able to be here and not be alone uh, during Christmas. Because when we get older, you know, in my case, I lost both my father and my mother. Hang on again. <coughs> and she lost her mom and, of course, her husband. And now here we are, like I said, making new memories. And, well, I don't know if I can speak on her behalf. She can say that I'm right or I'm wrong. But I know I want to improve things. I mean, actually, when you look at her page, it's gone up to 50k you said 
50,000 followers. Uh, we got to, well, prior to meeting Brian Lucci, um, he already saw what she was doing. And then he started sharing things. So the whole thing exploded. And I have to say, Brian Lucci, he's the producer and a former police officer uh, for Chicago PD. And he does an amazing job. 34K. Well, I mean, wow. And on my part, I want to touch lives too by teaching them how to speak up. That's why I did the speak up challenge. So basically this is sort of like a bonus day. So actually every day I do add a little topic to the whole thing. And if you want to see it, uh, it's on Instagram, but until New Year's Eve, and then I'm going to take it down. So if you still want to see it afterwards, then make sure that you register and click the link in the bio. And Joe and I, we work as a unit. She's been on many of my lives and we talked about the trauma she experienced. And in return, I do believe, and again, uh, improve me, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It did help her to deal with the loss of Keith. And also when she was dealing with the loss of her mom, which is still recent, it's this is the first Christmas without her mom. And we talked about, does it ever change? So this is the second Christmas without my mom. And it's the first time that I actually can go through the stuff and saying, okay, I don't need this anymore. I don't need to hold on to this. And actually the funny thing is that I, I have been making Christmas cards. I got these Christmas cards that there are, there are holes in there like a star and I started to embroider them. And well, basically you can get all this stuff nowadays too. And I thought we couldn't get the stuff anymore. And so I was like, oh, I need to hold on to this, but it's there. And well, uh, Joe, and of course her daughter, they got the first two Christmas cards. <laughs> and uh, I think you love it, Joe, right? <laughs> yeah, she says they're amazing. So, um, yeah, it's, you know, because of everything that had happened, I'm slowly seeing it's not the end of the world, but more importantly, what changed for me is I've been able to let go of the whole traumatic experience around it. Of course, not of the good memories because I've got a lot of good memories still. And I have to say though, that when I went live, um, I got to touch upon a number of feelings and emotions I'd experienced. I know that I also, touched Joe and not only Joe, I touched Stacey and other people too. So, and that makes you realize how many people are feeling so lonely because they got to miss their loved ones way earlier than they expected. Well, my mom, I lost her because of old age. My dad, even though um, it was cancer, which got him in the end, he was of old age too. And that's one of the professors once told me if people get old enough, especially when they're in their eighties, close to their nineties, then at some point, you know, uh, cells, they split up and then they, they split up again and again and again, at some point, uh, errors are being made. Normally they're being corrected. Those faulty cells, they get, um, destructed and the body recognizes it. So it says, Oh, we need to get away. Uh, get get rid of them and at some point it just doesn't happen anymore but yeah this is the thing don't take life for granted tell your loved ones that you love them every day especially when you go away because you don't know what's going to happen you don't know and you don't want your last memory to be one of where you were fighting and Embrace new memories being made, new friendships, 
which come into existence. So Jo actually told us that she got to meet Sally, who lost her husband to COVID too. And they are very good friends and they don't live that far away from one another, although Sally has moved, so they're a little bit further away. But this, you know, that this is so important that, that you let people know, you know, I love you. And uh, well, Joe says, I tell my kids every day I love them. And what she actually said is, we have gained one another's family, or better said, I've gained them as family, Joe and her daughter. And oh, well, maybe both daughters actually, but especially Ellen. And well, I think that uh, as far as Ellen concerned, I may be her sugar and I don't know. Um, but yeah, I do think we get along very well. We get very well along, the three of us. And I got something uh, in the name of Secret Santa to surprise her with, which is actually the result of someone else reaching out to me like, hey, I've got all this stuff from these metal, metal bands from the 80s and the 90s. And oh yeah, I'm, I'm her auntie now. Oh, that's good. It's Anything's anti, right? <laughs> Just call me anything. Okay, so anything's anti. <laughs> AA. Ooh, that's a different meaning to AA. That's funny. And uh, so I said, when I'm going to go to England, I'm going to take all the CDs and DVDs with me that I know that she loves. And you should have seen her face. Well, actually, I took pictures of it and it was so cool. And that's the whole thing, you know? We can learn from one another, we can embrace one another. And if, I don't know, I mean, it's because I didn't want to be alone during Christmas and she knew, her daughter Ellen knew that I didn't want to be alone during Christmas. So we were a little bit like, shall we go to Chicago? And I was like, no, I don't want to go to Chicago when it's winter. I want to go to Chicago, but just not when it's winter time because I can't handle the colds really well. You know, my skin ruptures and my joints start to aching way more than they normally do. And especially this part of my, my face um, is, is very, um, when, when it's cold, it really starts hurting. So I don't like the cold. And that's one of the reasons why I like to go to the US, especially when it's good weather, like in Florida or when we were in Chicago in September, it was great weather too. Um, as for being here, it's basically the same weather as in the Netherlands, although it's more extreme here. I have to admit it can be way more extreme here. So, but again, we talked about a lot of things and especially that, you know, it's so important to focus on what it is you want to do, the message you want to get out there. And also by sharing your story, you could be surprised how you can develop new friendships, new relationships, and also, of course, inspire other people. And, you know, that's what people need. They need to be inspired in order to be able to move on. And that doesn't mean that the loss is any less. It just means that we can look at things differently. As for the cleanup challenge, um, it's nice to be here because once again, I can see how I love being able to. Well, actually the moment that I unpacked, I was like, yeah, this is a priority. This is a priority and this is too. So these are the things that I want to have around me. And looking at Christmas tree actually in the lounge here, it's massive by the way, and I'm going to post it too. Some pictures about it on Instagram. It, the, the, the colored lights, they really brought me back to the Christmas tree of my parents, which I, by the way, have. Um, I, I sold my own Christmas tree, which I got from someone 
and now I have the other one. So when I get back, and hopefully I have a little bit more space. I actually have um, more space now because of the whole cleanup challenge, because I don't know if you've known this, I already started to do the whole cleanup thing prior to actually doing the challenge. Um, and the challenge was inspired by us going to Chicago, seeing that it's so nice to, to have a certain structure and be able to walk around and do certain things a certain way. And, you know, being here in London, we, we have that same opportunity and I don't really need much to go around. I just was like, yeah, but I don't want to throw all those memories away, you know, and then, oh my God, what's going to happen? But, you know, especially during the last few days, one of the things that I discovered is those memories, they are in your heart and they are not going to go away just because you get rid of certain stuff. The memories are still here and you can share them with others and through sharing them you can bond with other people and you can create new memories anyway i promise to be up in time so that's what i'm going to do but i will say that and then i'm going back when there's chaos in your mind and in your life you can get stuck when you get stuck, it's important to focus on the things. But when there are memories holding you back, then it's time to face those memories. Talk about it, see if you can get some support. Maybe get a coach or a therapist. Um, I do some coaching too. Well, not some. Um, maybe watch some videos, training videos. Um, a lot of videos on YouTube actually help people. Then talk about uh, focus. Yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> She's talking about breakfast. Um, focus on the right things. So don't get distracted because of all those memories and what's going on. Also, don't get distracted by things which are happening which we cannot influence but keep being focused on the goal you want and today we talked about those memories and making new ones so basically these are two uh, extra days from the three-day challenge and like i said it's going to be taken down at new year's eve so if you want to keep watching it and you want some more training on it and also i've got a cool handout of the Christmas angel that makes sure that you register so you can at least get the Christmas angel and um, you can get a little longer access to all of this and especially leave a comment because I know I got to some people I really have um, well I want, don't want to say hit them in their hearts because that sounds negative but I, I did do something and um, people have been sharing it and it's amazing to get that feedback knowing that i make a difference in someone's life and you know i know that a few doors down there's someone else and we made a difference in one another's life and that's the best example i can give so if i don't see you anymore then i'm going to wish you a very merry christmas tomorrow is christmas eve uh, so Joe told me today is the eve of before Christmas Eve or the eve of Christmas Eve. Um, and this is like a totally new experience. Today has been nothing but new experiences from going with the train through the tunnel, which I never saw, by the way, because it was dark, um, to going through all these countries in three and a half hours. And playing the card games uh, rummy 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 cup i think it was um to well just being here and it's it's amazing it's one of the most wonderful things but it's important to be open to it because otherwise you wouldn't have known it so joe says it's the eve of christmas eve we played rummy 
And she also says, Merry Christmas to everyone. We will be going live tomorrow after the Midnight Mass. That's what we decided we could do. Um, of course, I won't be able to use this microphone because I only have one. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's going to work for the both of us. Uh, you know, these things are like testing and not giving up. And yesterday I talked about sometimes things can happen which get you off, uh, which can derail you, you know. And that's exactly why I did go live just now again. Uh, this time really live, specifically because we had this amazing live with a lot of footage, but no sound. I did want to share because I did believe we had an important message to get across. Remember, you are never alone. And please let those other ones out there know that they're not alone either.